Good morning from Vilnius in Lithuania. I just woke up. I was about to pull back the curtains, nothing special, and then I switched on the camera. I was not expecting that. Good morning, snowy Vilnius. I'm Patrick Hughes, and this is Planet Patrick. Holy heck, Batman, what am I gonna wear? This is gonna make for a fun tour. Better get my big boots on. The orange book tells us many things. So first of all, at 10.30, in about an hour, I'm gonna do one of the so-called free tours of a city, of Vilnius in this case. The free tours are run by, usually by reputable companies or by individuals and they're quoted as free, but they hope that more than, I guess, five or 10 people come along and everybody pays five to 10 euros per person as a tip. For this particular tour, thank you very much to my friend, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Who went on this tour a few weeks ago, loved it and highly recommended it. There's certain things that I want to do. Will some of that be limited by how heavy the snow is? I don't know, but we'll work that out. The second thing that I wanted to mention, it's now in my phone. <clears throat> recommended to me by Renata, who lives here in Vilnius. And I met Renata and her family in Madeira. She recommended a particular restaurant. If you were with me for yesterday's restaurant in Latvia, which was eight euros 50 for three courses, this is not that. This is higher end. It's about 40 euros, I think, fixed price. I thought it was a nice way to bring an end to visiting the three Baltic states. It's Lithuanian historic cuisine. Off we go to grab a bit of breakfast here and then zoom into the old town to pick up a tour. See you in a minute. Breakfast was absolutely grand and now I'm going to head into the city center. Of course, I've never before filmed in any snow. Oh, and that's slightly wet snow. I think I might need to put on a hat for this. <laughs> okay, we have a hat, and believe it or not, even though I'm already wearing a number of layers, I've got another layer in my bag in case it does get too cold. But Patrick, what kind of layering are you wearing? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm wearing a merino wool undershirt or t-shirt, and then over that, a thin layer, long sleeve merino jersey, then a fleece jacket, then a puffer jacket. The only thing I don't have are gloves, and that's something I want to try and buy today. It's gonna to be a good way of working out if I've got any balance whatsoever. I suspect it's not great. <laughs> okay, I'm headed in the right direction, so all is good in the hood. Let's hope that these hiking boots live up to their hype. Would that make them hiking boots? Stepping from what I feel is like the new town area, which is where I was, across this bridge into what has to be the old town. I'm not sure if you can see right behind my right shoulder, there is sort of a bastion on which stands a couple of forts, and on this side of the bridge, lots of older buildings. Yes, that's on the footpath. While the footpaths are lovely and white and virginal, the, the streets have already turned to slush. That bell tells me that I'm 30 minutes too early to pick up my tour, which goes at 10.30, it's now 10 o'clock. I have to say that Vilnius has quite a different feel to Riga in Latvia and Tallinn in Estonia, the other two Baltic states that I've visited on this trip so far. I wondered if it might be that Vilnius was a bigger city and had a bigger population. The population here is around 560,000 versus over 600,000 in Riga, so that's not it. But what I think might be it is that things are built on a slightly grander scale. This square and its wide open boulevards have more of a feel of Vienna in Austria with the kind of architecture that is designed to indicate wealth, indicate power through which armies can march, where great civic events can be held, where everyone can see what's going on. And those tend to go with money, I think. Historical money. Is there any coffee? 
Not a coffee shop in sight. Not even a flaming KFC like Malmö. See, I pronounced it correctly this time. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We're in the middle of a very old square with lots of traffic going past and then in the midst of it, Vilnius pulls it out of the hat and has a fully interactive map that tourists can use. That is fantastic and the first time I've seen that outside of a shopping center, if I'm honest. Good job, Lithuania. Clothing and hiking boot report. After one hour of walking through the snow, my feet are toasty, I'm toasty. All is good in the hood. They said if there was somebody with a red umbrella, that was the person doing the tour. So that is a red umbrella. A lot of people, they come and they actually expect and want to see the snow. So you got lucky. Lithuania, as you probably know, the biggest city in the country and the center of entire Europe. And I'm not joking, it's a geographical center of Europe. If you take a good look at the tower, you will notice that the bottom of it looks different and it is so because it is much, much older. I could film absolutely everything that happens, but that would make for a very long video. So I'm just going to show you snippets and joys as we go along. in the 16th century and here 16th century is a very important date. This was a very interesting tour of Vilnius University founded by the Jesuits in the 16th century and indicating where the power was to be held here in Lithuania and we discovered that to this day under 1% of Lithuanians are Protestant. Isn't that astonishing? The other thing that we learned was that the architecture here is inspired because of that connection with Catholicism and therefore with Rome. The architecture is inspired by Italian Renaissance architecture. That's why it looks and feels so different to Riga and Tallinn which were German. Fascinating stuff. Residential palace. Valley. You will not see what's at the end of the street because the street bends. This is the perfect place to see Vilnius street plan. This open space in the middle of the old town was originally a building. It was the synagogue and it was destroyed along with the lives of 95% of the Jewish community here in Vilnius during the Second World War. And the Soviets weren't anxious to rebuild it. In fact, if anything, they leveled what remained of it to the ground and built instead behind us this Soviet building, a kindergarten. Even to this day, there's just a tiny Jewish community here in Vilnius. Lithuania does a good business in massive squares in the middle of the city. This is another one. So it turns out this square was used for executions and dancing and bear baiting. So, great crack altogether. The nicely looking thing here is the door. Unfortunately, Vilnius doesn't allow us to fly drones anywhere near the city centre and so this panoramic view is the highest that we're going to get today. You may not know that there's another independent republic within the Republic of Lithuania. We're heading there now. We are frozen. That is obligatory, that's the rule. So as you are smiling very hard, I guess it's time to enter. So this is the Republic of Ujapai. Ugne has said all kinds of interesting things about the requirement to smile, the predominance of art here, the fact that the name of the place means behind the river, river. So we're fascinated to see it. They've got the constitution and Gaelic, but also a Gaelagan Shah. It's so interesting that they're using Shan Gaelaga rather than more modern Irish, which is charming really.
Bye bye, Ushpaya. So this tour is starting to wind down. And you know what? It's been two and a half hours. That lady, Ugne, is indefatigable. But it is getting cold. I am getting hangry. Time to eat something delicious once we see the last few bits on our way back to Cathedral Square. Nice. Churches galore. This is the best known building in Lithuania. Anything red brick is very, very old. This one is from 1500. If anybody watching this is into camera gear, I can confirm that the batteries in my Sony camera are giving out at about 60%. That's going to be the end of this particular tour as my batteries are about to go. Stay with me later because I'm going to be looking at some Lithuanian food. What's that going to be like? Will it involve potatoes? Who knows? Well, that was an interesting lunch in this traditional Lithuanian restaurant. The chicken salad was very nice, and the dumpling that was stuffed with meat was really not to my taste. And the dumpling had been, I suppose, painted or doused in pork fat. Never mind. 13 euros 20. I've just met my friend Renata, who has been the number one guide to Vilnius and has shown me all the places to go. Um, thank you so much. We're going to go and have coffee because we're special people. You were saying this is one of the most expensive hotels. Yes, one of the most expensive and more, one of the most beautiful decoration in, in Vilnius. It looks very impressive. And you can feel the smell? Yes. I don't know where it comes from. Wealth. Yes. Money. Yeah. <laughs> but it's always here, <laughs> the smell. Oh, maybe they have a specific smell for the hotel. Yeah. Wow, this is really luxurious. Yeah. This is where I should be staying, not on the yes. Ibis. Yes, you can see the cars, Bentley, Porsche. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to show you my cars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can watch or you can buy <laughs> diamonds. I think you'll be watching only, <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah. Some Christmas mushrooms. Yes, and you can see the so, of course, we're going to the most dramatically decorated place in all of Vilnius. So this is Sugamur. Sugamur, coffee and desserts. The best mm. in the I'm ready for dessert. <laughs> Off we go. Yes, it's perfect. I'm always happiest when dessert comes. I'm gonna try a little bit. Oh, you can hear it. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Wow. So good. Oh, well, it's goodbye to Vilnius and goodbye to Renata after showing me around this afternoon and giving me sugar, which was probably a bad idea because now I'm hyperactive. Thanks, Renata. Thank you. Hope to see you again in Lithuania in summertime. <laughs> yes, I'll come back whenever it's a little bit warmer, I hope. Yep. Okay, the next time you're going to see me is at, uh, is at the restaurant. How do I pronounce the restaurant name? Erklonamai. Exactly that. See you there for food a little later on. Bye-bye. Bye. When we wake it's a couple of hours since we left Renata behind. I went back to the hotel and got a quick rest. And now I'm heading back into her main recommendation, a traditional Lithuanian restaurant, but tradition updated. I've had a look online, it looks very Michelin. It'll be the most expensive that I've had in the Baltic States at 40 euros for four courses. What? And then pairing wines are 20 euros, so it'll cost a total of 60 euros. This is less about filling your bellies, although I hope that happens too, and more about the experience because they explain the history of Lithuanian cuisine to you. Sleep. Hear the crickets, see the moon. 
This is the Xander. Mm, I wasn't expecting it to be cold, but it's nice. I'm on my own in the restaurant, by the way. I think I eat a lot earlier than most people. Full of beetrooty flavor. This is a Lithuanian wine made from quince. What does it smell like? Herbal brandy. It's nice and very sweet. So how would I sum up my experience at Ertlio Namas? I like the idea of the open kitchen. I think the food was really good, in particular the beef course. I'm not a fan of borscht, but the beetroot consomme was really delicious. Of course, I'd like a little bit more of everything. My only criticism is that it's a restaurant that is over dominated by its concept. So when a fresh plate is brought to you, everything is explained in terms of the history of that particular product and how it relates to Lithuania. That's very interesting but those explanations take a long time. And as a result, the ice cream melts or the beef gets a little bit colder. So 60 euros all in, not bad for a night's entertainment. That's the end of this particular episode of Planet Patrick. Thank you very much for being here all the way to the end, if you have been. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would. You can join my Patreons and support me, keeping me on the road. If you like watching live stories along the way, you can follow me on Instagram at this is Planet Patrick. That's it for now. Take care. Bye-bye. The life of the Lithuanian jackal is spent entirely among snow leopards. Sorry, I'm wittering at the camera. I do apologize, Ugni. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick.